I was going to the swimming pool like I'm doing every day. And um, so I went by my secretary's desk, and at that time, uh, a phone call rang. And my secretary uh, picked up the phone. It was a phone, you know, from a foreign country. And so I, I was kind of intrigued because I knew that it was a day where they would announce the uh, Nobel Prize. And, uh, and so I understood that it was a phone call from, no, uh, <laughs> not Norway, from Sweden. And uh, so, of course, I, 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 I was very uh, surprised. And then my secretary gave me the phone, you know, and I talked to the member of the committee, the head of the committee, and which announced me that I was uh, with my, my uh, former uh, graduate student, Dana Strickland, sharing the Nobel Prize, you know, for the invention of this technique that we developed in 1985, you know, uh, which is called charcoal amplification, and which is used towards the world. Yeah. Well, it's it's you cannot describe it. I thought, you know, some I thought that uh, maybe the floor collapsed on me, you know, and. Uh, uh, also, it was a, a lot of emotions immediately, and uh, you know I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it, and I, you know, immediately after, you know, what's nice about when they announce the prize, you have to you have to go into a, a, a press conference, you know, which is being held in Stockholm. So you don't have much time really to 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 think. Okay, you have just to have to to get your gear in motion for the for the for the um, press conference. Uh, and of course, uh, soon after, you know, we had the deluge of uh, mails and phone calls and so on. So this was really quite something. Well, it's, uh, it's something which is um, it's a dream. Uh, it's always been a dream, but you don't really think that you are go one day you are going to, to get it. You don't work really to... You work because you like physics. Um, I work because I, you know, it's my, physics is my passion. But it's not for the Nobel Prize, you know. But... Uh, if you are good at what you are doing, you know, this is what can happen. You can come up with some brilliant idea and get the Nobel Prize. And when you are working on lasers, you know, uh, you know, laser is a very um, powerful, powerful light of beam of light, okay? Turns out that um, when the power, you know, is too large, then you can, da you can damage, you know, the components which constitute the laser, okay? And uh, so you cannot go higher in terms of intensity, in terms of power. It's like if you had a car, right, which could really go to, I don't know, two, three hundred kilometers an hour, and but you are... You have to stay at 50 kilometers an hour because uh, the engine is going to blow on you. So it's very much like this. Okay, we know that we can, um, we could go to much higher peak power provided by, by the laser, but we cannot reach it. We cannot, you know, uh, use it. So um, we invented in 1983. We got the paper in 1985, but we start to work with Donna in 1983 or so, uh, a way really where you could really, a uh, technique that we could really harness the full power from your laser. Okay? And this technique, if you want, I, you know, is uh, 
is uh, trying to, you, you have to tweak a little bit the uh, components uh, because uh, what we do is um, what we generate short pulses, we generate short pulse, but when we speak short pulses, you know, uh, pulses are uh, the durations of uh, millions of billions of seconds, okay? Uh, sounds like Carl Sagan here, but... <laughs> uh, and, uh, and consequently, you can produce very much like a karate chop, you know, if you release the energy in a very short time scale, you can really get extremely high power. Well, this is what we are trying to do with the laser, okay? Very much like uh, with what you do in, in, in karate, you know, karate chop. So, first of all, you are producing with an oscill what we call oscillators, you are producing short pulse. Short pulse in millions, as I say, millions of billions of seconds. Okay, call that femtoseconds. So produce these short pulses. The pulse is as a really s small amount of energy. So you want to amplify it. So as I say, you stretch it. So this pulse, which is a millions of a billions of a seconds, you know, now has been stretched. Uh, is stretched by a million times, okay? So because you stretch it by a million times, you are decreasing the intensity by a million times, and you can amplify it a million times better. That is, you can extract the energy a million times better. And once the energy is extracted, now uh, you have a lot of energy, the pulse is long because you have stretched the pulse. Then you have to compress it. To compress it to the, the original value, which of a femtosecond, a millions of a billion times. And then you have, you have this absolutely huge peak power for a short times. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to stretch it. It's easy to compress it. But what is, is not very easy is to do it perfectly. And uh, for the type of work we are doing, uh, you need perfection. And so that took us some significant amount of time, and we had to modify the architectures to do that. So, because at the beginning, for instance, we were stretching by a factor 100, you know, and, and then compressing by a factor 100. So we could get 100 times the power that we will get with the system. But then we knew that we could go much higher, like 10,000, 100,000, a million times. And so in that case, you can get 1,000, 10,000, a million times more power if you do it perfectly. So, and this is what, uh, it took us some time really to do it perfectly at this time. And, um, and so that's the reason now we can reproduce extraordinarily high peak power, okay? Peak power that we can produce over a very, very short times is equivalent to the peak power of the all power plants, the power of all power plants in the world. Wow. But yeah. only for millions of a billions of a second. <laughs> At the beginning, you know, uh, we were not really, uh, we were not really expecting so many applications. At the very beginning, we were really interested about the reactions of atoms to very, to very high powers of light. And then we, we discovered that we could really use it for, for instance, make new uh, accelerators. We could use it for uh, micro-machinings. 
We could use it for medical application like in ophthalmology. And the reason we can really do that is because uh, the pulses are very, very short. You, are, you deposit the energy in a material that can be the cornea of your eye or so in an extremely short time. So um, the damage doesn't have the time to occur. What you, uh, we have invented, so to speak, is uh, the, perfect, the perfect scalpel. You know, we can make cuts extremely precise, okay, and without any collateral damage. damage. That is the reason why it's so important for, uh, for eye surgery, for instance. Okay. He came totally by accident, <laughs> and and really uh, it was a real accident, um, which was not very uh, consequential, you know. Uh, but one uh, once my uh, one of my students, you know, was aligning the laser, was working on the laser. It was this new laser, and. Uh, uh, accidentally, he got the laser beam in his eye. So this is, a, of course, we take that very seriously. We take the student to the hospital, and uh, and then the um, ophthalmologist look at his eye, and was very surprised. And he said, "But what kind of laser do you have? Because they are familiar with lasers, you know." But this one was a new type of laser, and and the student asked him why why is it, why you are asking these questions, and he said because your damage is perfect. So immediately we realized that we had something, okay, and um, the uh, ophthalmologist, you know, uh, gave me a ring few days, and he said, I would like to work in your group to do femtosecond, what we call femtosecond um, surgery or ophthalmology. That was in 1993, something like that. Well, and now, of course, it's a huge business. You have about, uh, I, don't know, I don't know, I think, 10 million people got the procedures every year.